can get every time girls for shopping with a gun. You just go, baby. Alright, y'all, welcome back. Still got the good luck mullet, as you guys can see. It is currently Friday, and uh, last night Eric came over. We did a little bit of work on the hobby stock. You can see the roof's off. Um, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit on race car stuff, but we did a lot of work on the tow vehicle here too. Um, if it ain't one thing, it's another on this dang thing. Um, so now, issue is that the uh, the brake light stopped working, and also the windshield wiper stopped working too. Um, and I spent a good, I don't know, hour last night chopping this off. So you guys can see, I got to cut an angle now. It used to look all boxed in like this side did. I'm gonna have to do the same thing on this side too eventually, but. It's a lot of cutting with some cutoff wheels, but basically I did this because I needed uh, room here, clearance, so when I go ahead and come in here after a race, I do a UE, I don't jack up the trailer and put a bunch of dents in the side of the trailer like I've been doing. So I have to go ahead and put like a little plate or something here on it to kind of make it finalized and finished product and all that. But uh, let me show you what's going on with the, uh, the windshield washer or the windshield wiper issue I've been having here. Um, we went ahead and we checked all the power and ground and everything going to the, the wiper motor as you guys can see right there and uh everything seemed fine so i put it all back together and there was looked like there's like a little bit of corrosion and stuff that's been going on here maybe the seal on this cap wasn't doing its job but i think water got in there and moral of the story is it stopped working so i cleaned it all out put it back together still didn't work so i did the hammer trick Start banging on the motor and voila, she's back to life. So, knocking them off the list. Now I gotta figure out why the taillights don't work or the blinkers and the, the brake lights and all that stuff. The only one that works is a third brake light. So I haven't been able to get on the camera very much as you guys know. Um, just had a lot of stuff going on this summertime. Um, we had my birthday, we had uh, family in town, we had 4th of July. Uh, I've been going to the lake a little bit, which has been nice because it's been super, super, super hot here. Uh, but I'm back and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reseal this guy that goes back on the wiper motor I'm gonna put a little bead of RTV on there <clears throat> and seal her back up and what we've been doing on the hobby stock is not much but been kind of chipping away at it I went ahead and I made all the mounting points for the uh, the roof to hold it down so I got a nut welded with a little pad on it on all basically four corners so I can stick a, a good sized bolt through and the roof will be secure and then we can go ahead and start building our side panels and stuff for it um i need to make a filler joint for this right here and i made one last night and i found a good way uh to use my tow vehicle as a sheet metal brake as you guys can see i got a nice little brake right there um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and make this a filler panel over here gotta do a little more bending on it kind of bring this side down a little bit but it's coming together. Uh, but I put this little guy right here. Let me show you. Put it right in here where the tailgate is. This big old honking rusty tailgate. Put it in there, jammed it up, and then Eric pushed on one side, I pushed on the other side. And we got it all bent up. Perfect. Redneck sheet metal brake. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and squirt a little bit of dielectric grease down there in the contacts where the actual power goes into the motor at, in the module. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plop this baby on. Maybe I'll do a little bit on here too. What the hell? The little contactors there. A little bit can't hurt. All right, and in case you guys are wondering about the tow vehicle and how everything's gone, because some of you guys have been watching for a long time, you guys know that earlier in this year, I had to freaking rebuild this whole motor pretty much. And it was a pain in the road, but, but, so far, this thing runs good. And uh, it's got me to the, tr to the track both times now without breaking down or having any issues. So knock on wood, um, she's looking pretty good. So thank you guys for asking. Let me plop this baby down. Just like that. All right, tighten her down, she'll be done. All right, and in case any of you guys really wanna hear about my life, and what's going on personally. Um, another reason I haven't been on camera very much is uh, because I actually quit my job um, about a couple, I don't know, maybe two-ish, three weeks ago. Um, and uh, I had a, another job lined up. And uh, it's a long story, um, but 
I'm back at my current job now. Um, so I kind of put a little dilemma on, on working in the garage and stuff. Just my mind wasn't right, but um, it was a job I was at for nine and a half years. So quitting was kind of a big deal, um, but I'm back. Still working the same old Chevy dealership. All right, let's see if she works now that she's all put back together. She better. Yeah. All right, so as you guys can see with the cowling off, all the big old clumps of freaking dirt and leaves and whatnot, so might as well take a vacuum down there and just clean it up while I got the chance and it's open. All right, so went ahead and checked all the wiring to all the taillights and stuff. It turns out I just got all bad bulbs. <laughs> Every single one of these bulbs has got an issue. Some of them only have the running light and they don't have the stop light. Other ones only have the turn signal and not the running light. But what it comes down to is I thought they're all uh, gonna have the turn signal and the brake light um, and the running lights on all of them, all the red ones that it is. And it turns out that the bottom ones right there and there are just for the running lamps and the turn signals. And then the ones on top is for the running lamps and then the brake lights. None of them work. I tested all the power and ground to them. I'm getting juice like I should, but they just don't light up. So uh, I ended up going ahead and hitting the old Amazon. And uh, you guys aren't probably gonna be able to see this, but I bought some nice LED looking ones to replace them. So hopefully that'll be really nice and bright backup uh, lights when I install those LEDs. So. Should be here tomorrow. So Amazon said, thank God for Amazon, right? Uh, so maybe I'll be able to put them in tomorrow and show you guys um, how they look. Isn't that a cool can? Hell yeah, it is. All right, so I just got done uh, grinding off all the welds I did. Um, so they're kind of smooth, so you don't really see them as much when we paint it. So that's looking good. It's Saturday, which is a new day, and uh, Amazon came in the clutch here. Um, brought my LED lights I bought. So I got these bad boys. Um, two whites, or no, excuse me, four whites and four reds, which is exactly what I need. And it's just about 60 bucks. Um, so I've already done these two right here. And these ones down here are a little more difficult to install. Uh, the problem is here is this freaking rubber they give you is too dang tight. So when you do, go ahead to push in the, the actual light itself, they don't want to go in very easily. So I had to use the old ones up here, um, which is no big deal because they're in good shape. But the bottom ones, these things are harder than a rock pretty much. And so I really can't reuse these. So I'm going to do just half for now and then I'm going to wait until it gets dark and I'm going to check out the brightness of them. And I'm hoping that they're going to be a lot brighter, but if not, I have to go back to square one, but I'm gonna just compare them half and half tonight. I'll let you guys see what's going on. But the real exciting news is what I'm doing right now. Um, let me uh, get my little top off, my signature move. Um, so as you guys know, I've had a smoker for a while and I actually did use it a couple weekends ago. I used it on the 4th of July. I put a, a tri-tip on there and it came out pretty good, but I'm still not a professional at it yet, but I got a rack or two or five of rib lits, not rib uh, racks or ribs, these are rib lits. So they're cut in half, St. Louis style. So I'm gonna try my hand at these bad boys, I'm gonna spritz them down, and uh, I'm gonna wrap these guys in a second and put them in some barbecue sauce. These guys have been going almost two hours now. And uh, like I said, I really don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just trying to not mess it up as, you know, too bad here. I know you gotta put water down here and uh, I don't know. I've never done ribs before anyways, but I asked Livy to give me some ribs from the store and she brought back riblets. So we're going to see how it goes. But so far, I'm very, very, very happy with, uh, with the smoker I got here. Super nice. You got a little digital readout on it. And technically, I think I can hook up my phone through Wi-Fi and I can see like the internal temps of everything going on um while i'm inside so it's going pretty good it's a good day to have a beer and barbecue 
or smoke, whatever you want to call it. Just got it done mowing the lawn and work on race cars and trucks. So cheers to you guys. There's a mystery chicken. She likes beer. Well, she's scared of it, but she likes eating it. All right, so I touched on it a little bit and I figured while those ribs are smoking, I'll kind of tell you guys what the whole deal with work is. Um, so this is my biggest accomplishment ever in my career. Um, I've got what they call the world-class title here to General Motors. And some of you guys might remember um, this last winter, I was taking some videos and telling you guys that I was going down to LA, Los Angeles, um, and taking these tests for work. And basically um, they're called assessments. And uh, I started with General Motors uh, and Chevy 10 years ago this August. So, you know, 2014 of August, here we are 10 years later. Um, and it's taken me that long to do all the training through General Motors and then take all the tests. And all eight of those assessments I had to take and I passed them all the first time, which is cool. Um, so basically after you pass all those, you, be get, you become what they call a world-class technician. And that is the highest level I can get um, as a technician working for General Motors. So it's a kind of a big deal to me and I'm really proud of it. Um, and I kind of had that little issue with work. Uh, I'm not gonna elaborate on it too much, but um, I will say that this goes out for everybody out there. If you feel like you're not getting treated right and you feel like, not, not you feel like, you know that you're not being appreciated for what you're worth, know your worth and do something about it. That's all I can say. Cause it's not, not right for people to walk over you um, in this world, no matter if it's work, you know, personal things at home, it don't matter. You guys just gotta know what your value is and you gotta respect yourself and do something about it um, and not let people walk all over you. But it's all in the, in the past now and uh, it's all good. So I just figured I'd share with you guys my little world-class title here. All right, so I just got done with dinner and survey says on the ribs, kind of disappointing. Um, I cooked five half racks of ribs, which is the uh, riblets cut in half, St. Louis style. And uh, some of them turned out pretty tender, not really fall off the bone like I was hoping for, but close to it. And then other ones were super tough. And it's weird because I cooked them all the exact same way in the smoker. Um, so I don't know what the deal is. I might have to go ahead and meat probe each one before I pull them out next time because there might be a little bit of discrepancy I guess maybe in like different sections of the smoker um, so I think I'll do that next time just meat probe everyone before I pull them out um, but you know you live and learn so uh, I'm back I'm working on the hobby stock but it's dark now so I figured I'd show you guys the uh, the lights here on the truck all right I think it looks pretty cool but you guys let me know what you think here <clears throat> So I got the LEDs on this side, as you can see. Not that little top small one, but just these two right there, and then the halogens. And uh, yeah, the LEDs are definitely quite a bit brighter. Let me show you guys the blinkers and stuff and the backup lights. All right, so we got the brake lights on, these two, top two, and the third brake light, obviously, and then there's the blinkers. Definitely a little bit brighter over here. Check out the backup. All right, got a brick, basically, or a big ass stone on the brake pedal. Hoping that holds. We'll see. There's your verse. She ain't moving. Yeah. I don't know. They're close, but these ones are definitely brighter. They blind you more when you look at them. That's for dang sure. But I like the way it look a lot better. More modern and stuff. Doesn't look as freaking jalopy like this side does. But that's them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all these pads here. Uh, the mounting pads for the roof cleaned up, de-slagged and painted. And then I'll go ahead and uh, put the roof back on. All right, so I'm starting to put all the uh, 
B pillars and C pillars on. Um, trying to get a good idea what it's going to look like. I had to split the front here to widen out this fender a little bit so it looks a little more, I guess, square because this fender, I don't know why, it was coming way in here at an angle. Um, but I made this panel, it looks pretty good, I think. Pull this guy back out. All right, so I gotta basically cut it from this corner right there to this little slice I made right there. And all thread makes a great straight edge and you're coming in a pinch. So I'll go ahead and slice the line with a little exacto knife. Good to go. All right, gotta kind of clamp together here um, and cut out. This is what's gonna look like. That should block all the mud out of it. Kind of a temporary deal, but once it's sink, sink the rivets in, um, should be done. So, you know, that should keep a little bit of mud out of there. Okay, so you're kind of looking at what it's gonna look like in the future, just painting it all one color. Um, but got this panel in, just kind of clamped down a little bit for now. Um, and this guy's all cut out, notched for the uh, window net here. And I haven't riveted it in yet completely just because I want to paint it still, but that should keep most of the mud out of there. And uh, doesn't look too bad, I don't think. All right, so Thursday, Thursday again. And I am now trying to make this rear bumper symmetrical. So I'm starting the process of cutting this deal off. And of course, got a little obstacle here, big old thick piece of square tubing. But I gotta make it look like the other side and give it all the clearance we have for the trailer. All right, making the filler panel on this side now. Got it pretty much all bent up. Yep, another piece of scrap I used. This one's all beat up. It was the uh, upper portion of my nose at one time for the super truck. Now it's a perfect filler panel with the correct bends and yeah, a little bit of dimples, but nothing a hammer can't fix. All right, just gotta sand her down, but all the uh, little things and dents are out of it. I just turned this panel into basically a piece of tin foil into a pretty flat piece. So I'm gonna continue doing all this body work here. Just try to get everything half decent before I put it back on one last time. They're twinning. Identical twins. All right, riveted on this little piece right there. I wanna go ahead and pull this thing out in the sunlight and get a better look out of it, out of it, at it. Um, so I can see how it you know, looks not from two feet away, more like five feet away. Alright, so I know what you're thinking. It looks like a disheveled pile of junk right now. But there's progress being made. Let me just tell you, you have to believe me, that there's a lot of progress being made. Um, I'm not riveting everything down at the moment. Um, I'm just drilling the holes and getting the rivets kind of in there just to make sure that everything looks decent. But I'm not riveting everything down because 
I want to pull these panels off and spray paint them off of the car. A little bit easier to do it that way. Um, but we're talking about paint here. And so that's probably a good thing to be hearing for anybody who uh, is excited to see this thing on the track. At least as excited as I am uh, to see this thing on the track eventually. Uh, talking about paint here. So um, getting really close with all the body panels. Um, and uh, just basically got to pull everything off and spray paint one panel at a time. Uh, still haven't really 100% nailed down the color combo yet, but I'm going to figure that out because we got to get on the track on August 17th and it's coming up pretty quick. So uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to paint the car before the race. It might just have to look like a pile of junk on the track with all the different colors and stuff, but that doesn't matter. The goal is just to get on the track and I made a lot of progress this weekend on it. You really can't see it like I'm saying, but let me tell you what. We're getting close guys um so i'm gonna end the video now um it's getting kind of dragged on and i know it's the same old same old stuff but believe me we're gonna go racing this thing it's been a long time coming um so you guys stay tuned for what's gonna happen in the future um but mark your calendars august 17th um i should hopefully be out the track um taking eric with me and doing a little double trouble action in there so thank you guys for watching as always remember if it's bent it ain't broken